amen and amen. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, worship team, everybody. Can we put our hands together for our dream team, everybody that just so wonderfully serves the Lord every week? And we want to let you know we have our growth track taking place right now. So we want to encourage you to go ahead and go through your four steps of growth track. It's a blessing and you get to be a part of those that are, you know, every week coming and putting uh, their skills, putting their heart to God's service. So that, that's very, very important. I also want to remind you, uh, we have Thanksgiving service coming up on the 25th of this month, all right, uh, just in two weeks. Uh, next Sunday, by the way, I will not be preaching. I will be here, but I will not be sharing the word. Pastor Joe Rosa will be with us, and he's going to be sharing the word, and it's going to be great. And then right after that, we'll be coming to Thanksgiving on the 25th. And we're going to have one service. It's going to be at 8 o'clock at night. It's going to be bilingual. And uh, we're going to be having baby presentations on that evening, all right? So if you have a baby or maybe a bigger baby, you know, that you've never uh, presented to the Lord. Babe, they never presented me, man. I'm going to present myself in this. Uh, <laughs> my parents were Catholic. I remember crying so much when they were pouring that water in my head, you know, but anyways, that's not today's message. I just try to remind you that we have Thanksgiving service on the 25th of November. And uh, one of the things that we do every year on Thanksgiving is that we collect a special offering. It's not a regular, you know, Sunday morning tithes and offerings or, you know, your first commitments. We're going to get into that in a moment. But every year for Thanksgiving, we bring God a Thanksgiving offering, a gratitude offering for everything that he's done in our lives through this year. And, uh, and sometimes it's a faith offering because maybe you're not too thankful for some of the things that might be going, but you're declaring into the future. So I'm going to let you know that evening we will be picking up a special Thanksgiving offering that we do once a year here at Numa Church, all right? Today, we're going to be starting a, a new three-part series, okay? And it's called Beyond Blessed. Can you say that with me? Beyond Blessed. Beyond Blessed, all right? And this is a series actually we were going to start this series like in April, all right? And what happened, Pastor? COVID happened, all right? And uh, so we just pushed it back and pushed it back. But some of my staff knows if they look into the preaching calendar of this year, th this was set up for April, all right? Uh, but last year at this time in November, all right, we launched our first stewardship focus, all right? And we actually have that banner back there, and we have paperwork out in the back. If you're new and you sort of got to church, you know, and you're like, what is that whole first thing about? You know, back there, you could pick up those papers and, and read it and stuff like that. But we committed in 2020 to put God first in every area of our life. In what area? Every area, okay? The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. God will not be second or third or fourth on no one's list, okay? God is to be first, all right? And uh, never did we know that when we said that we were going to make God first in 2020, that we were going to face the challenges that we faced this year, all right? Nobody told us that, all right? I could have come up here and said, you know, next year might be a little tough and everything, but never in the world did I imagine, okay, that we would face the things that we faced in 2020. Now, I don't know if for you, 2020 might be a little harder than every other year in putting God first in your life. Because when we have challenges, a lot of times God sort of starts to slip down that line. Because, man, now i got to work more because i got to provide more because my finances were touched. And I have a family and I have kids. And, and sometimes God starts to drop. And all of a sudden, maybe in the midst of the difficulties or maybe being sick. Maybe you got sick this year. Maybe you had the COVID. Right now, they, they showed me a picture of, of a gentleman, you know, Edward's brother-in-law, that he's been in the hospital for some days on a respirator, and he's unconscious. And it's a difficult situation when you're going through something like that, you know, and I'm like, in my heart, man, I want to put God first, but, man, I'm sick, you know, and I'm in the hospital, and I'm going through, through all these things. So definitely, guys, listen to this. The Bible says that every word of God will be tested. 
That is in Proverbs. Whenever there's a promise that is said, whenever there's a word that is given, that word is going to be tested. That's why a lot of times you say something and all of a sudden you feel like hell came against that. Has that ever happened to you or only to the preacher? (laughs) It's because God will test his word. And the enemy will come and say, I want to see if he really believes that. I want to see if he's really going to put God first in his life if I touch his health, if I touch his finances, if I touch his children. I want to see if he's really going to make God first. And when we said that this year we're going to make God first, we said it. we were not only going to do it with words but with actions, and we made a financial commitment. It was actually in November of last year coming to Thanksgiving service where we decided that we were going to give for one year above our tithes and offerings, all right, a commitment that we would make, whatever each person would decide, all right? I do not stand up here like if it was a, I don't know how to say like a subasta. I don't know how to say that in Spanish. Huh? Like an auction? Like, you know, who wants to give more and this and that? No, I, <laughs> I am not going to do that. <laughs> Lord, take me to heaven before I actually have to do that, you know? But I will say, hey, pray to God and ask the Holy Spirit what he wants you to do. Because I really believe if we all listen to God and the Holy Spirit is the one that runs this, he'll speak to his children. And he will guide us in what we need to do. So we had our commitment service. We came and we brought in the first fruits of that on Thanksgiving service. However, when we made that commitment, a lot of our financial position changed also during the year. Because I know some people that got furloughed. I know some people that, you know, that got laid off. I know some people that had to retire. I know people that your condition right now might not be the same one that it was November of 2019. And today you're here and you're like, oh my God, pastor, I even forgot about that whole first thing. You didn't mention it and I sort of like, you know, put it on the side and I, and I forgot about it. So last week I met with my elders and together we said, how, how can we make this work? Because I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be completely honest with you? I made a commitment and not even I have finished the commitment that I made. And I like speaking things clearly like that. So what we decided to do is, you know what, instead of finishing it now in November, let's just extend it to June, and let's finish what we started, and let's not leave it halfway. Because when I make a commitment, guys, and this is the way that I live, and I want to show you guys as a church, when I make a commitment like this, before making it with a person, I know that I'm making it with God. And you know what? I could tell somebody, hey, man, you know, things got caught up, and I can't do it, this and that. But the Bible says, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. The Bible says, before you make a commitment, think about what you're going to commit to to make sure you can follow through with it. So I I don't want to leave anybody hanging. I I remember I used to play hangman, you know, as a kid in school. And I remember being hanged was like the worst thing, you know, when you love. I don't want to hang anybody, okay? Oh, man, you committed to give this amount and I'm sorry, you didn't make it. You know, now God's going to be, no, it's not about that. It's not about you, you know, being right with PC or with NUMA. It's like, you know what, let's do this in front of God and let's do it the right way. So we're going to extend this to June. Okay, you guys are okay with that? All right, and you'll hear me mentioning it. All right, and let's just finish this whole commitment. And, uh, and if you're here, you know, and you're new and you're like, I don't even know, Pastor, what in the world you're talking about. All right. Uh, you could come to one of us, you know, one of the pastors, people sitting here at the end to the information center. Like, I want to know about that first thing that pastor's talking about. What is that? You know, you get, get caught up on it. Also, you're going to receive a letter from me in the next couple of days in the mail. I had somebody come and talk to me, and they told me, Pastor, you know that in the midst of all the craziness, I forgot how much I committed to? And that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm going to send out a letter. It's not a condemning letter. If you receive the letter, it's like, oh, man, this week I'm not even checking my mail. Pastor's sending a letter. (laughs) No. (laughs) All right. I'm going to send a letter out thanking you for what you committed to do and say, listen, this was your commitment, and this is what we've received so far. And if there's any discrepancy, I had somebody come and say, Pastor, I was just giving the money, and I forgot to put first. I just gave it in. So if any discrepancy there's with that, that's the way you're going to find out. 
all right? And I'd rather us be clear, especially when it has to do with money, guys, all right, that we're clear with everything so you will get out that, I mean, we'll get that letter out to you. And uh, like I said, it's not a condemning message, all right? It's not a condemning letter. It's just for us to know where we're at with all this. Now, to get back onto the message that we're starting today, all right? And that's what we're going to be learning about beyond blessed. Today's message, okay, is called living beyond blessed, Living Beyond Blessed, okay? And I want to recommend a book from Pastor Robert Moore. It's called Beyond Blessed, all right? I actually announced it last year when we launched this whole focus that it was going to be a hand-in-hand thing, and, uh, and that book has blessed me. Now, when we talk about beyond blessed, what do you mean by beyond blessed? Because I understand blessed, but beyond blessed, I'm going to put it to you this way. How many people here are parents? Raise your hands. Parents? All right. How many know that having children is a blessing? Raise your hand. Not as many hands went up as the first time. I'm a little scared with that. (laughs) Let's ask this question again. How many are parents? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you guys know that it's a blessing to be a parent? Raise your Keep your hand up. All right, amen. Can we get a picture of all those people that put their hand? All right. Now, children are a blessing. The Bible says that children are a blessing. Now, I'm going to ask a question. How many are grandparents? Raise your hand. Grandparents. Grandparents. We have some grandparents in the house. We don't have too many grandparents, but grandparents? Okay. Grandparent is beyond blessed. A parent is blessed. A grandparent is beyond blessed. Because it's not even your children anymore. Now it's your children's children. And I see all those grandparents when they look at their grandchildren, the faces that they make. They didn't make those faces with their kids. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So that is the best physical example that I could give you of what it is to be Beyond what? Beyond blessed. Very good. You guys are a good learning crowd. You guys at home, beyond blessed. All right? Now, when we give generously, okay, and learn to manage what God has given us, we start to experience what beyond blessed is all about. I'm going to repeat that. When we give generously and learn to manage what God has given us, and we manage it well, we begin to experience life beyond blessed. When we follow his plan, when we follow God's plan, what's his plan? That we would use resources properly, that we would use them the right way. You know what? He wants to bless us, church. How many of you guys know that God wants to bless us? He wants to bless us because he wants to channel his resources through us to bless others. He wants to use you as a conduit to get to others. That's what beyond blessed means. It's not that the blessing stops with me and that it goes beyond me. The blessing will go beyond me. Now, some years ago, we did a series, you know, on the blessed life. And we read that book, and we had it in small groups. And in The Blessed Life, it talks about generosity and how to give our tithes and our offerings and even generous offerings. And you know what? A lot of people started to put that to practice, and it's a blessing. However, if you practice generosity and you're not a good steward with your money, you're not going to get too far. You're just not. And as your pastor... The same way that I would get up here to speak about marriage, the same way that I would get up here and speak about faith, the same way that I would get up here and speak about God's kingdom, I want to speak to you guys about being good stewards because at the end of the day, that will make you or break you in a lot of ways. I really believe that God gives us enough to be able to live and to bless others. But a lot of times we don't know how to handle or manage what God is giving us. And the whole time, what happens is instead of having too much money at the end of the month, we have too much month at the end of the money. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Has that ever happened to you before? Like, oh man, this month a little longer. This is like, what, 45 days or something? (laughs) 
<laughs> my check ran out when I was like in the fifth day. No, I'm kidding, you know. It's like, <laughs> all right. So the first component, all right, is generosity. Write that down. The first component is generosity. The second component is stewardship. So my first point that I'm making here today, it takes two legs. Write that down. It takes two legs. That's my first point. It takes two legs. Generosity and stewardship. Can you say that with me? Generosity and stewardship. Okay. I want to say it like this. If you're generous but not a good steward, God will not be able to open up the windows of heaven over you. That's a promise in the Bible. For those that are faithful in their tithing and their giving. But you know what? God will not put resources in your hands if you're not going to manage them well. I know a gentleman that he got blessed with an unexpected amount of money that came to him. And unexpected. My wife goes, hmm, because I know she knows who I'm talking about, you know. And this gentleman got so much money all of a sudden. Have you ever read that those people that usually win the lottery in about three or four years, they're broke completely again? Because they don't know how to handle money? Well, this is that situation. This gentleman got this unexpected amount of money, enough money to live comfortably for the rest of the years that he had ahead of him. He came to have a meeting with me. I sat down with him and a money manager so that he could put his money in growth accounts so that he could have an, a withdrawal, like an annuity of money coming in and he would be fine the rest of his life. But you know what happened? He was very generous. And he started to give money away to people. And he would bless this person with $100 here, $500 over there, $1,000 over here. And all of a sudden, it's like if Santa came to town. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you know what? He was being generous, but he was not being a good steward. You know what? how this whole story ended up? In 10 months, he lost all the money that had come his way. Not only had he lost it, now he was in debt. Because since he had money, he started to buy stuff and get into these type of agreements and things like that. So now he owed people money in 10 months later. So it's not only being generous, but it's being what? A good steward. A good, the word steward, somebody like, what is that? A good manager. Okay? A good manager. The other side of the coin are people that are great stewards, but they're not too good with generosity. That's the other side. Okay, you know what we call those people? Tight. <laughs> All right? We say that we, they walk with what? <laughs> with their elbows. <laughs> you might know some of those people because you're laughing. All right? They might be close. Don't look next to you. They might be in your family. People that you know that they're tight. You know, and, and those people is like, man, it's like pinching a penny. You know, it's like so difficult to even get $5 off of them. That's the other side of the coin, all right? Neither, all right, neither not being a good steward or being generous will get us to where God wants to get us. It needs a both. It needs both, all right? The purposes of God will not get accomplished, all right, if both of them are not walking hand in hand. So this is the importance of this, okay? Here's God on one side, all right, and here's the need on the other side. Like last week, we presented the, the girls that we're going to sponsor in, in Dominican Republic with a dinner now for Christmas and everything. And by the way, I want to congratulate you, church, because in one day, all the girls got sponsored and all of them, you know, everything, everything. We didn't have one girl left, all right? That was beautiful, all right? But here's the need. Okay, here's the need. Here is the situation that's going on, and here's God. And God wants to reach that need that is over there. You know what's in between? You. 
and me. We're the ones in between God wanting to meet that need, the need that is here that is asking for help, and you and I are right here in the middle. And we're the ones that could say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and direct that in that direction because I'm a child of God. And as a child of God, I'm like my daddy. I represent my daddy. Okay? Now, if you decide to keep the resources for yourself, you know what God's going to do? He's just going to look for somebody else to do it. But he's going to get it done regardless. So you know what? I'd rather be the one that God just channel it through me. You know, Lord, let me have an ear open and see what you want me to do, who you want me to bless, and what way you want me to do it. But in order for that to happen, I need to be a good steward because I can bless somebody with something that I don't have. You guys understand what I'm talking about? So it takes two legs. I remember growing up, I was looking at one of those Tom and Jerry cartoons. My favorite cartoons were Tom and Jerry growing up. You know, later on, I moved to like Transformers and He-Man and all that kind of stuff. But Tom and Jerry was the best. And I remember one day that Jerry, okay, did something to Tom. Poor cat was always running after the mouse, never caught him, all right? And that day, okay, Jerry somehow nailed one of Tom's foot to the floor. And Tom is trying to run after Jerry, and you know what Tom was doing? He was doing this. You know why he was doing that? He wasn't advancing? Because one of his legs was tied down to the floor. Okay, it takes two legs to advance. You can't advance on one leg. You need to be generous and you need to be a good steward. It takes two legs. Amen? Now, the second point. The second point. Why talk about money, Pastor? Why do we got to be talking about money in church? You know, you were in this whole thing about our democracy and God's kingdom. And, man, I was getting ready for you to finish that series to get back into to service. And now you're talking about money? Like, oh, man, I'm taking another month off, you know? No, don't take another month off. Guys, don't tune me off at home, please. All right? But why talk about money? Because the Bible talks about money, church. All right, the Bible talks about money every time, okay? In the Old Testament that somebody worshipped God, they brought an offering. That was not my idea, okay? God commanded it. Actually, I have some news for you. God was the one that invented tithing. It was not a pastor that needed money. The pastor needs money, so you're going to talk about tithes and offering. No, it was God that put that tithing thing in the Bible. It wasn't a preacher, all right? Malachi was not written by a preacher, you know, from the 20th century. Let me put that in there. No, it was God. And out of 38 parables in the New Testament, okay, 38 parables, 15 of them are about money or possessions. Can you imagine that? 38 parables, 15 are about money or possession. Here is the question. Was Jesus trying to get their money? I, actually, I'm going I'm I'm to, you know, I, I want to be completely transparent with you guys. Am I trying to get your money? Am I trying to get your money? I have some news for you, church. You guys, okay, I have some news. I don't need your money. I've never needed your money. And you might be there and you're like, yes, you do. You need to pay for the light. You need to pay for the water of this place. You need to pay, you know, for the mortgage of this place. You need my money. No, I don't. I need God's money. I don't need your money. Because at the end of the day, it's his money. It's not my money. I got some news for you, and this is very important for for me to share with you because this is something that became truth for me. Be careful when you start to think it's your money. Be careful when you start to think that what's in your account belongs to you. I have some news for you this morning. It doesn't. Pastor, I worked hard for it. Psalm 24.1. You guys can go with me to your Bibles. How many of you guys remember these things called checks? You guys remember checks? 
I remember some guy from our church not too long ago said, Pastor, he goes, what are those? I'm like, please don't say that, man. You're making me feel so old by asking that question. You know, today everything's automatic withdrawal, you know, text giving and stuff like that. Checks. This verse, I put it in my checks. And it was Psalm 24, 1. And I wanted to make sure every time I wrote out a check to somebody, this verse was there. What does it say? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything. Who's the owner? The Lord. Who are the stewards? Us. Okay, we are the steward. What has, listen, okay, what has God given us? Everything. Everything we have. This jacket that I have. You know, the Lord didn't go buy this jacket. I went to buy this jacket. All right? But this jacket doesn't belong to me. If at the end of the service, the Lord told me, take off your jacket and give it to Renee that is sitting there. You know what? I have to take off my jacket, and I can like it a lot. And I can go maybe after the service, and I give it away and go and buy another one because I really like it. But if the Lord tell me, give it to him, I'm going to go and give it to him because even though it's on my back, it's not mine. You guys understand what I'm telling you? So Jesus, was he trying to get their money? He was trying to get their heart. Listen, he was not trying to get their money or their possessions. He was trying to get their heart. That's why he talked about money and possessions. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. And this is a verse that we get backwards. Okay, this verse says, Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. A lot of times we say, wherever your heart is, your treasure is. That's not what this verse says. This verse says, wherever your treasure is, your heart is going to follow your treasure. So if I want to get somebody's heart, you know what I need to get? Their treasure. And if I get their treasure, I get their what? Their heart. That's the way that Jesus did it. To get our heart, God asks for what? For our treasure. Because if we give our treasure, let me tell you something. We'll give God everything else. We'll give God everything else. And the third point, the third point, being a blessing. Write that down, being a blessing. I want you to know something this morning. Okay? God wants to bless us first because he loves us, okay? He wants to bless us because he loves us. Because just as a father wants to bless his kids, God is a father and he wants to bless us, okay? I want to I wanna get some concepts out of your mind this morning in the, in the next few minutes that I have left. Because there's nothing wrong, church, with wanting to live in a safe neighborhood. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to send your kid to a better school. Is there anything wrong with that? No. There's nothing wrong, guys, okay, with you wanting a house where there's a room for each of your kids. Even though, I don't know, with, you know, I have little children. I have three small ones. My older one got big on me already. But the three small ones, they all want to bunk in together in one room. And I look at my wife and I was like, you know what? We should have just got in a three-bedroom house. Because these guys just want to bunk in together all the time. Jeremy, Bella, and David. But there's nothing wrong with you saying, you know what? I want these guys to be fine. You know what? There's nothing wrong, church. Listen to what I'm going to say. Because these are just concepts that we've, we've gotten up here. That you want to have a dependable car. We have this concept that to be holy, you have to be in a car with three wheels because the fourth one is falling down. 
It could blow up any second, you know. Where did we get that? As a father, okay, don't, you, you have a kid that is in driving age. Don't you want to give him a dependable car? Or you want to give him a car that's going to break down in the middle of I-95? So we got these concepts twisted, all right? There's nothing wrong with those things, all right? And it seems like any time, okay, that we talk about those things, the enemy comes and says, well, that's materialism. Hey, I don't want you thinking about that. Hey, you're t- thinking too materialistic. Oh, you want a bigger house? You want a better car? You want this? You want that? And the enemy comes and talks to you, all right? I want to let you know something today. There's nothing wrong for you to want your family to be blessed. Amen? It's important that we understand this. God blesses us because he loves us. But, and this is a a but here, he also blesses us so we could be a blessing. And I want to read and close off today by reading 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version because I think this version got the scripture here correct in the way that it's, it's translated. 1 Chronicles 4, Four, verse 9 and 10, it talks about this guy named Jabez. Uh, years ago, there was this little book that came out. It was, you know, the prayer of Jabez. Any of you guys read that book? Small book, all right? This guy Jabez only comes out in the Bible one time, and it's two verses that talk about him. And these are the two verses. It says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Pay attention. God calls him more honorable than his brothers, And his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. That's the only time the Bible talks about Jabez. This guy asked that he would be blessed, that God would enlarge his territory, and that God's hand would be with him and keep him from evil, that he may not cause what? Pain. What did he want to be? He wanted to be a blessing to those that were around him. He didn't want to cause problems to those that were around him. Now, the question that I have, is this a bad prayer, guys? Is this a bad prayer? Is it an evil prayer? Because if it was, God would have never granted this prayer. And God, the Bible says that God granted it. And why would God call Jabez more honorable than his brothers if this was a bad dude? So is it wrong to ask God to bless you? Say with me. No. Is it wrong to ask God to bless you? You guys at home? I don't hear you guys. No, okay? It's not wrong to ask God to bless you. It's not wrong to ask God to bless you so that you can be a blessing. And I want to close with a story. The worship team could come up. Many years ago, we were feeding the homeless in downtown. It was something that we were doing on a weekly basis. And we would go down to, back then, it used to be my old school. It used to be Trinity International University down at the old campus of First Baptist. Now today, that uh, belongs to Christ Fellowship downtown. And I remember we would go there during the week to feed the homeless. And if you guys know a little bit of how downtown gets during the night, Okay, there's homeless all over the place. And I remember that we went in there and there was this large room where we would feed the homeless people. And then after that, there were bathrooms where they could go and take a shower. And while they were taking a shower, actually there was clothes that were being washed for them. So that they could wear a clean, you know, clean clothes. And I remember that day I went, you know, with, with my daughter over there. And she was little. She must have been maybe around six, seven years old. 
And when we finished, okay, we drove out. Now remember, we were feeding them. We weren't providing them a place to stay. So when we finished, we drove out, and all these people are lining up on the streets and just putting, you know, their little cardboards. Some of them had sleeping, uh, what do you call that? Like when you go camping, sleeping bag. Some of them had sleeping bags and cardboards, and some of them had pillows, others didn't. But I'm telling you, I'm not kidding you, at least 200 people just one after the other, after the other. So we're driving down the streets and my daughter's looking out the window and I see her quiet and she's just looking out. She didn't speak a word until we got into the I-95. And when we get on the expressway, I asked her, I'm like, what, what, what are you thinking? She was little, six, seven years old. And look what she told me. She told me, Daddy, when I grow up, I want a big house. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, I want a big house with a lot of rooms. And I want those rooms to have a lot of bunk beds. And I'm like, what is that for, baby? And she goes, so that all those people that are sleeping there, they can have a place to sleep. This is coming from the heart of a six or seven-year-old. Let me ask you, is there something wrong with that? She wanted to be in a position to be blessed so that she could one day be a blessing to others. She wanted to have a big house with enough rooms and enough bunk beds. She didn't know at that time how much money all that stuff costs, all right? She's just throwing something out there. But you know where that came from? It came from a pure heart. And you know what God wants us to do? Understand that he wants to bless us because he's a good father, but he doesn't want us to hoard it. He wants us to be a channel of blessing. And in order to be a channel of blessing, we need to be generous, but we also need to be good stewards. I want you to close your eyes right there where you're at. And there where your eyes closed, I want you to take a moment. You guys at home, can you do this with me? Just close your eyes for a second and just take a moment and quietly come before the Lord and ask him if there needs to be a change in your attitude about giving, about stewardship. Ask him if your attitude is in the right place or you don't like this. And if there's something that he needs to do, just tell him right there where you're at, Holy Spirit, just work in my heart. Holy Spirit, let me be sensitive to you. I want to be a good representative of my father. Tell him that. I want to represent my father correctly. And just take a 